<clears throat> Hi, good evening. Hi, good evening. We're glad you're here. If you're uh, joining us and uh, you're new here, my name's John Minton. I'm the pastor. We're thankful for you being here at Everyday Christian Fellowship. <clears throat> Let me tell you the schedule for tonight um, so you kind of know what we're doing. Uh, how many of you have never been to our Lord's Supper time here at Everyday? Never been here before for this. There's a few new guys. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, we have a saying here at Everyday. It uh, goes something like this. We're not just a church. We're family, right? And so everything we do here is based on that family um, idea of who we are in Christ. <clears throat> and so the hope is that you're sitting with the head of your house. Now, whether that be... Uh, the husband who is here, or if there's no husband here, the wife. Look, <clears throat> if you're serving as a head of house, some of you um, may want to sit with your mentor, one of your mentor, <clears throat> and, uh, and let them serve as a head over the table today. What the head here means today is they're serving you. That's what the head means. And so, um, and taking responsibility for the family. So here's what we're going to do. <clears throat> uh, we will uh, we'll read some passages from 1 Corinthians talking about the Lord's Supper what the purpose is, what it's, what's behind it, and then, uh, and then we'll spend <clears throat> about 10 minutes, each family spending time with their own family. You can do it in here, you can get away, but 10 minutes is about all we take. And, uh, <clears throat> and what we do during that time is I ask the head of the house uh, to confess to their family the things in their life that they've done in, in, in front of their kids, in front of their wife, maybe to their wife, any, any sin that they can confess. Uh, and then also confess in their own, on their own life to the Lord about their own sin. <clears throat> and then lead their children and their wife uh, or lead the rest of the family uh, in confession. Um, I, I make my children or I ask my children how they've done each other wrong and they confess to one another. They ask for forgiveness. By the way, we don't ever let them say they're sorry. Uh, we make them ask for forgiveness. And so we do that throughout the house and then we spend a few moments just to Ask the Lord for forgiveness for our own sins, simply because of what the Bible says about the Lord's Supper. So with that in mind, let me read, oh, so we'll do that, and then we'll come back in here, and we will take the Lord's Supper together uh, as the Bible commands us to. <clears throat> so in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, it reads like this, verse 23, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This is the cup in the new, of the new covenant in my blood. <clears throat> Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, Whoever eats the bread <clears throat> or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks, eats and drinks judgment to himself, for he, if he does not judge the body rightly. For this reason, many among you are weak and sick, <clears throat> and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if you judged ourselves rightly, we should not be judged." But when we are judged, we are disciplined by the Lord in order that we may not be condemned along with the world. So then, my brethren, when you, <clears throat> when you come together to eat, wait for one another. If anyone is hungry, let him eat at home so that he may not come together for judgment. And the remaining matters I shall arrange when I come. <clears throat> so the main thing you need to catch is the reason we take of the Lord's Supper is to remember the Lord. To remember the sacrifice he gave um, for the forgiveness of our sin. And so we do this in remembrance of him. This, when we, uh, matter of fact, you look down at your table and you'll see a really cute package, right? A little cute juice, a little cute little uh, bread at the top. Uh, here's what I tell people at home. You may not have grape juice. <clears throat> you may not have wine. You may not have unleavened bread. It, it's in remembrance of him. It's not going to turn into the blood or turn into the body. Uh, it doesn't save you. Uh, just like the water doesn't save you in baptism. It is a representation of what Jesus did in his flesh and in his blood. And so, uh, if you're at home and you want to take the Lord's Supper with us, just go find a liquid and find something to eat if you can, close as you can, and remember the Lord's sacrifice tonight with us. So I invite you to do that. So we're going to take the next ten minutes, and, uh, and the whole point again is to rightly judge ourselves. 
<clears throat> so that it, it's, like, it's like this. It's like if you went to court and, uh, <clears throat> and you were about to go before the judge. And then, and then right before you went to go see the judge, you met with a lawyer. And the lawyer said, okay, listen, here's the thing. Anything you tell me right now cannot be used against you in the court. Anything you tell me right now, I'll write it down and then we'll erase it. And then nobody can bring it up because you're already forgiven for it. You're, not even your conscience will condemn you. Trust me, it'll all be clean. And so it's time to confess. The Bible says if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. And so <clears throat> that's what we want to do. We want to stand before our, our lawyer, right, Jesus Christ. And we want to stand before him rightly. And the way we do that is confessing our sins to him before we take of the sacrifice. Because if we, if we take of this remembrance thing, and yet we do it also remembering that we just sinned and didn't really care, uh, then the Bible says we, we eat judgment into our own lives. And uh, <clears throat> I love the fact that it says even though we're, we, we eat judgment into our life, we still will not be condemned. It just means we're going to have a problem. Some of us, God may even call you home. Uh, just because just because God takes us out of this world doesn't mean we're still not His kids. Um, so, the key is is do you do you want to live in right relationship with Christ? If you do, let's take the next ten minutes. Lead your family in a time of prayer and uh, in a time of confession, and then we'll come back together and we'll take of the Lord's supper. <laughs> This is how serious I am about the fact that it doesn't matter what we're eating or drinking. We have run out of those little pods, and so they're getting some bread and juice ready. So if you don't have any, there will be some supplied in the back. John's got some juice and something back there, so it's in remembrance of him.
You know, we don't, uh, we don't normally sing, but we're going to tonight just because we can. You may or may not know the song. I don't have the words for you, but if you don't, you can just listen. But, uh, you know, I was meeting with my family, and <clears throat> at one point, uh, <laughs> one of my children, I won't tell you which one, was, was confessing her sin. Y'all do realize it may not even be her. That's just the only one I can do that, and it's funny every time. So, um, but as the confession was happening, I was looking around going, we don't have time for this. I mean, there is so much, like, you have so much to confess right now. And I, I finally just looked over and said, I forgive you. You don't have to, you don't have to go into it. Right? Now, and I, I realize that that doesn't sound as holy. Like we want to confess all of our sins to God, and that's great. But you know how cool it is if in the middle of your confessing sins, if God just went, hey, I forgive you. It's good. You're golden. You're my child. And I, it just reminded me of the song that I just want to sing tonight. Um, because whether you know it or not, you're not confessing your sins to be forgiven. You're confessing your sins so that you'll stop living like a sinner. I mean, the whole point is you speak it, get it out, and stop living it. It's more about you than it is about him because he's already made it about him. <laughs> he's already forgiven you, made you clean, and he washes you every day with the washing of the water through his word to present you back to himself without wrinkle, blemish, or any stain. And so, I just want to speak this over you tonight. If Christ is Lord, now if Christ is not your Lord, do not listen to what I'm about to say. Except to know that this could be true if Christ was your Lord. You ready? If Christ is the Lord of your life, you are forgiven. End of story. And so we can sing something like this. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. And I'm accepted because you were condemned. And I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Do that again. And I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted and I'm accepted. You were condemned, and I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? It's my joy to honor you. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. And it's my joy to honor you in all I do. Help me honor you. I love changing the words to songs that, that I don't agree with. We, we say, uh, in all I do, I honor you. I wish that was true. Don't you wish that was true? So I change it. In all I do, help me honor you. Right? In all I do, help me honor you. One more time, I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted, you were condemned. And I'm accepted, you were condemned. I'm alive and well. And I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. You, 
my king would die for me. Amazing love, I know it's true. And it's my joy to honor you. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my king, would die for me? It's my joy to honor you in all I do. Help me honor you in all I do. Help me honor you. One more time. In all I do. Yeah. Help me honor you. Amen. All right, so if, uh, if you're the head of the house, if you've, hopefully you have already your, uh, your stuff, your, really, Kayla? <laughs> wow, there you go, just throwing it around. So if you'll take the, uh, the top part off and you, it will, you'll find the bread there. <clears throat> Going to read the scripture again. So if you'll take the bread out. By the way, if you do it wrong, it becomes really hard to get the bread out afterwards. It says, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. So what I want you to do is I want you to take this, and I want you to remember its symbolism, that this is the body of Christ, and I want you to break it, and realize that your sin is what broke him. The Bible says once he had broken it, he said to them, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And so, Father, we remember you today. Remember your, your, your body that was broken for us. Father, that you, you left heaven where they declare you king every moment of every day. Where they sing holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And you came to a place where, where we spat on you and we crucified you. And we put a crown of thorns on your head to, to make fun of you. And they took, they took a, a, a cat of nine tails, they took a, a whip with glass and shards all over it and beat you 26 times in the back and 13 times in the chest, ripping all of your flesh off just because you loved us. So, Father, I thank you for your body that was broken for the sins of your people because I'm one of those sinners. And I eat this today in remembrance of you. Thank you for the body in Jesus' name. Amen. The body of Christ. The Bible says, in the same way, they took the cup also after supper. And he says, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. And so we, we try really hard to get something like wine, grape juice, something of the vine that looks like blood. So that you will understand, the Bible says, without the shedding of blood... There can be no forgiveness for sin, no remission. And if it weren't for what Jesus did on the cross, you couldn't be forgiven. And it's only because of the blood of the cross you are forgiven. It's not because of some great confession you made. It's not because of some, some great forgiveness speech you had. It's not because you, you confess your sins every day. It's because at some point you accepted the gift that Jesus gave on the cross and you asked Jesus Christ to be Lord of your life. And the day you received that grace is the day that this blood became the thing that saved your life. And so, Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for the blood that was shed on our behalf. For centuries, Father, they looked for a lamb, a perfect lamb that they could sh shed the blood of. But the minute they left, they felt guilty again. 
But your word says, because the, G, John the Baptist said, look, the, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And Father, that's who you were. You came and you became the perfect Lamb of God. And in doing so, your sacrifice made perfect all of those who are drawing near to you once for all time. Because this, this blood, the blood of Christ, washes us clean for eternity. And so God, I thank you today. Thank you for the blood that was shed that cleanses not just our sin, but the Bible says it cleanses our conscience to know that we can rightly stand before God, not because of who we are, but because of who you've declared us to be. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. The blood of Christ. Let me just do something real quick just as a, just as a word of note so you'll know why we don't do this. We, don't, we do not do this on Sunday mornings on purpose. You know, the Bible says those who eat and drink of this and do it unworthily, they drink judgment into, and eat judgment into their life. And I, I realize that on Sunday morning there's a lot of non-believers in church. I like the way Pastor Butch says it at Country Church. He says, we're not a closed communion, meaning you don't have to be a member of the church to take of the communion with us. But we're also not an open communion, which we just say, hey, anybody take it. Matter of fact, I have a young man here tonight named Jonah. Jonah's my son's best friend. And, uh, and Jonah came and so... We, we believe in what Pastor Butch calls a close communion. Because we're close in Christ, we're brothers and sisters, we take it together. But Jonah, I didn't know where Jonah stood with the Lord. And so first thing we did was he called his mom and dad tonight. And we said, are you okay with him taking the Lord's Supper? Do you not want him to take it? You know, I, or can we just treat him like our son? And they kind of just said, well, treat him like your son. And so we walked through faith together and Jonah surrendered his life to Jesus tonight. Now here's what's really cool about that is, is that Jonah may already have been a Christian. You and I don't know that answer. He already believed in God, already believed in Jesus, but had never confessed Jesus with his mouth to be Lord, right? And so he did that tonight. But here's what I love about salvation. Salvation is, a, is an ongoing process, amen? We're saved from our past. We're being saved from the power of sin, and we one day will be saved from the presence of sin. And so Jonah took another step in that walk tonight. And so, and so he got to take the Lord's Supper. And, uh, but now he takes it knowing that he's right with the Lord. So that's good stuff. We now are going to go from here. You can stay seated or you can come out to the baptism. Uh, we have uh, one young man who's going to be baptized. He was saved at our uh, men's retreat. And so where is Taylor? Is he already out there? Oh, he's right here. So he gave his life to Jesus at the men's retreat. And so, Taylor, we're going to go baptize you right now. You can stay and watch it on the screen, or you can come out and watch it out there. I will define what baptism is out there, so, but you'll hear it in here. So you can stay seated or come out either way. Uh, oh, you know, hey, jo uh, Adam, you got this mic? I can put that on and use it. I didn't think about it. <laughs> we got time. Everybody's, everybody's taking their time. I didn't think about using it, but it's actually a great idea for... Oh, it's on, too. It is on? Yeah. No, it's not. Oh, maybe it's this one, sure.
<laughs> Put him in a cave, right? And then what happens three days later? Uh, what's, uh, resurrected. He was resurrected, right. And so that's what the baptism is. It's a representation of the fact that, look, Jesus has already washed you on the inside. So this isn't going to make you cleaner. Matter of fact, I see some dirt spots in there. This is not going to make you cleaner. Okay? It's not holy water. What it's going to do is it's going to symbolize, just like, the, just like the blood and the bread that we just took, symbolize the blood and, and, the, and the, the body of Jesus. This symbolizes the fact that one day you're going to die. But what's already happened in you is that the life of Christ lives in you so that when you are buried in the ground, it will not hold you. But Jesus will come and receive you to his own. And you will be raised to life in him. And so when we baptize you, we literally say you're buried with him in baptism, but you're raised to walk new in Christ. So here's what I want you to do. If you will, could you give us a one minute with a mic and tell us why you gave your life to Jesus or how, or you just tell us that answer, okay? Uh, Keep it close, right on your chin. Okay. Uh, well, my whole life, uh, I started going to church when I was like, uh, my baby, yeah, and uh, I was just tired of living in sin, and I always said that Lord was my Savior, but I mean, I just said it, but never really meant it until the mentor retreat, and I was just tired of hiding my faith, so that's why I'm here. So you've, hold this, so you've given your life to Jesus. Yes, sir. Trusting him alone for your salvation. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, then I ask you to come get more. <laughs> hey, can I just say to you real quick? Listen, go ahead and see. Can I just say, listen, when you take your first steps of faith, like tonight, right? You're, you're being obedient. Slide this way. So tonight you're being obedient to be baptized, yeah? 